All right. Come on, live. We are now live. Sorry. Are live? Did you Maybe? want? Did you want warning? <laughs> I didn't know. Nice. You, <laughs> what do you want warning for? Like I told you, I'm told, totally messed up and whatever. So Kathy Icon is here with Ashley, Ashley Schroeder. Schroeder. Yes. Fine. With A2X for Amazon. Um, so we're doing a live demo right now. Yes. Look at this. We we're set up a little ghetto style onto the looking at the computer screen. But so what do we got going on here? Okay. So this is um, this is the main uh, home screen for A2X. Okay. So A2X uh, is an Amazon accounting tool. So we right. import all of the financial details from Amazon. Okay. Um, we process all the numbers, all the different trans kinds of transactions, and we send them through to QuickBooks. Nice. So when you're using A2X, this is your kind of main screen. So yeah. You can see kind of metrics for the last few months of sales. You can see all of the settlements that you'd be expecting from Amazon. Mm -hmm. So these are the payouts that Amazon would be making into your bank account. And if you review one, you can see the... Um, you can Do you see, see all the detail of it? Basically, yeah, you can expand all of the details and see. So oh, nice. In any given Amazon transaction There's settlement, so there many. Is, exactly, just hundreds and hundreds of all different types and the opaque meanings. And yeah, it's very, very confusing. Yeah, I did and a few of those. So like I told you, I had a client that I did a few of these for and I just set up a, like a recurring sales receipt. Yeah. And then I'd go into Amazon, mm -hmm. get the settlement date thing, Yeah. yeah. put it in. But I didn't necessarily know... Yay. Like what was behind all of those numbers or yeah. anything like that. So, so that's I made two, it work. That's the two big challenges with um, Amazon data. Uh -huh. One is because they pay every two weeks, yeah. you can end up getting paid on, say, 4th of October. And right. that's 10 days worth of September sales and yes. fees. Yeah. And if you book it in 4th of October, obviously, you've massively... So are you able to split that back? Yeah, so we split oh, wow. it by month. Cool. And so that way you properly account for September sales and fees, October sales and fees, even right. though the payment actually arrived in, in October. Nice. Um, and so that's that's sort of the first challenge. And the second is that, that net payment into the bank account has all of those different fees and things yes, yes. taken off of it. Right. And so if you sort of just code that amount, uh -huh. you lose visibility into what your total sales were, what your total right. fees were, and refunds and everything else. Yeah, so I like so, when I was doing it, I just I, I did one little layer. You're really, like mm -hmm. blowing it all up. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So we basically allow an accountant to fine tune exactly how they want to map all of those things. Nice. So we offer a sort of a generic default set, yeah. um, which works fine, but in general, most accountants want to kind of tweak it for their clients. And once they've got cool. a good setup, they'll just copy it to each client. And nice. use the same one. Uh, so what I thought I'd show you for the demo. Yeah. Uh, so if we go, go for back it. to the. So if we imagine, uh, so I've set up a kind of a contrived example here. But if, if we imagine in QuickBooks here, we've got a bank account, uh -huh. um, like what you might see in your client's <coughs> account, and you can see they've received um, two thousand two hundred eighty-four dollars here. Okay. Um, on the tenth uh, of, of November, yeah. and over here you can see. Um, you got it in here. Right here. So there's a settlement that Amazon started on 26th of October, finished on no 9th of November, and then would have paid out a day or two later. Yeah. Okay. And so if we look at that one, you'll see it's split based on um, the transactions that happened in both months. Oh. So we can see um, because it ran from 26th to the 9th, um, it's basically taken all of the stuff that happened between the 26th and the 31st, put it in one um, period, yeah. and then it's split the November details here. That's and nice. so when we send that to, um, to QuickBooks, it will show up over here. And I will show you. So basically, uh, the way we, we send the data to QuickBooks is a journal entry. Okay. Okay, so all of those transactions show up on a, a journal entry uh -huh. uh, with the accounts that you've decided to use. Okay. And so when that, um, should have come over by now, yeah. So when it comes over, if everything's working like we expect, um, the deposit on the journal at the you end made it match. will match exactly to the deposit. Nice. Okay. And so if it's a single invoice period, as in right. if it's just in one month, then there's just a single journal entry with a single deposit at the end. Uh -huh. In this particular case, because it's two, um, so if we look at the two most recent ones, so if we look at the October one, what we, what we do is we, so these are all the different fees and charges and you can see the, um, the accounts that have been selected for them all. Okay. Okay, and you've got your debits and credits, some are fees, some are, you know, refunds and things. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of that period, oh. so at the total for the end of October, we've got sort of a running total. So at, as at the very end of October, that's what Amazon sort of owes you. Right. right. And then we carry that forward into the next. Nicely um, done. Journal so that 
um, so you can see the carried balance. So as at 31st of October, you have right. a very you small balance. Right, you reverse it. And then you bring it forward into this one. And then that way, when you get to the bottom of this one, whoops, sorry. Uh, when you get to the bottom of this one, you can see the actual expected payout amount into the expected bank account. Yeah. And that's why we get that really nice, easy to reconcile thing because basically QuickBooks says, oh, there's a exact amount being deposited right. to the bank, it's exact all amount deposited on the journal, and then you just simply click match. And honestly, that's one of the things that a lot of apps have problems with, or they kind of forget. Like, as the accountant or the, the user of QuickBooks, I mean, the bank feed is core. Mm -hmm. So yeah. being yep. able to match to it, mm -hmm. and like them going, well, I know it's in there. I don't, like, why can't I match to it? I don't understand. Yeah. So that is a huge plus because now we're not duplicating transactions and all yeah. of that sort of stuff. Plus, I think, you know, the accountants we talk to, it's a trust thing. Yeah. Because if you have a, an amount in your bank account and a perfectly matching journal with all the different transactions, all right. coded, you know you match, you're done, like you don't have to worry, you've captured all of that. Yeah. And if you're an auditor coming into a business, the first thing you're going to do is look at a bank statement and say, what's this money from Amazon? Yeah. And you can say, well, here it all is here, you know, the whole right. transaction, everything summarized. That's beautiful. So that's, um, you know, that's been a big part of the way we built A2X was for that reason. We wanted it to be really strong, auditable, like reliable data. Right. Um, and the other part is, the, I mean, the reason we did it with journals and deposits like this is for the kind of ease of, ease yes. of processing the, right. the information. So the whole thing is really about making it super scalable for accountants if they've got you know, dozens of Amazon clients. Okay. There's just not a lot of work. You know, like that, yeah. all of the data is flowing in here automatically. Well, you're taking, I mean, I. I mean, on a good day, that probably takes me 15 minutes to do, mm -hmm. you know, to do yeah. one. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. if I get confused or if there's something different or whatever, it'll take a little longer and have to research it. But I also didn't split it out between the yeah, two periods. That makes it a lot harder. Like, I just yeah. did it cash, yeah. like, whenever we got it in. So, I mean, that's, yeah, you're saving a whole bunch of time there. Yeah. yeah Cumulative, yeah. you're, yeah, adding all that up. And I was just working on a really small Amazon client, so. So that's the other thing that, I mean, if you've looked at those reports, so I actually, I got a single example here I wanted to show you. Um, so each order can actually result in five to ten different right. transactions. Yeah. So even a low volume seller doing say, you know, a few few hundred or a few thousand orders a month, you can easily end up with ten thousand rows in a in a spreadsheet. If you've right. got a seller doing ten thousand orders, you can have hundreds of oh, thousands. Oh it's all the yeah the yeah. Uh, yeah, Amazon fees, all the other da 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 all, bleh, all yep. that stuff. Exactly, exactly. Is insane in there. So that's awesome. Yeah, so that's so that's the kind of data. <coughs> and then when it's all set up, so basically mm -hmm. we normally recommend accounts kind of get their first few um, posted, like I did, like kind of clicking to send it. Yeah. Uh, but once you're kind of happy that it's all working, you can enable auto uh, posting. Oh. And then um, whenever we detect, so we're checking for new settlements every day. As soon as we detect a new one, uh -huh. we'll actually just straight away send it to QuickBooks and it's just sitting there ready to ready to do. So it's updated. And so you'll just get an email yeah. like this that says, hey, we've got a new settlement. Nice. You send it to QuickBooks. And that way, once a month or once every few weeks, you, you go into your client's accounts, match them all up. If you found a, um, a payment that didn't have a match, you'd know there's something going on. Maybe Amazon didn't pay them when they were right. supposed to, that kind of thing. Uh, so it becomes that it becomes almost a check and balance as well. You can find problems that way. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So, so that's I got a question for you that's a little bit. Um, how do you handle inventory? Because with the journal entry, you're kind of going around inventory. Yeah. Then. So yeah. do you have a fix for it? Do you have, um, so do you moment, recommend people use another app to yeah. do the inventory? At the moment, with basically our advice to, um, to sellers has been don't try and use the built-in inventory features. Uh -huh. um, basically, the way Amazon deals with inventory is just quite messy. I don't know if you've ever looked into the well, financials for your... This was the one. Like I had one client and we had, they were selling packages of, of water. Mm -hmm. and different things and whatever and I was trying to track inventory <laughs> it was the most complicated thing and yeah. I was spending way too it wasn't worth it yeah. in the end so I don't know how many people actually track the inventory and I, I feel like there are other systems that do it better than yeah because invent like I think going into QuickBooks might not be the best solution we found um, we found smaller sellers with a f maybe a few dozen or a handful of SKUs can yeah. do it. And that's because almost the SKUs are almost like pets, right? They know them all, they right. know how many they have. Exactly. And, they, um, and so they can micromanage it. Right. If Amazon breaks something and loses in the warehouse, they can go and you know, fix the okay. numbers and things. But uh, 
in general at scale like once you've got a few thousand SKUs or you know an at scale business you can't really micromanage the SKUs within okay. the accounting system and so our approach has been to take the totals and just yeah. send them to um, just send them so you'll have a, a basically a balance in, in QuickBooks you have said FBA inventory you know stock right. in Amazon's warehouses and so we calculate that total oh, okay and then we'll just send that and then as it changes we can maintain the maintain the balance so do you move on those transactions do you move the inventory over uh, so that's um, so we have a beta program at the moment okay. for a function called cost of goods sold oh, okay so what it would do is for a given settlement we we'll uh -huh. figure out what got sold in that period uh, and then we actually in the same way we split and create two cost Dude, of yeah goods once sold. you get there yeah you're golden yeah right? well that because that kind of closes the whole yeah loop. the loop and it also matches the costs against the sales yeah because a lot of um, sellers especially sort of when they're getting started, they sort of take the naive approach of just expensing cogs when they purchase right. the stock. Yeah. But of course that creates this really lumpy margin yes. uh, and you can't really trust your gross margins, you can't really see your profitability right. each month. And so... What do you think the percentage of people, Amazon re resellers out there, are actually profitable? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I mean, when you're starting out, that's... I mean... Yeah. It, it looks easy, but I feel like the fees and everything like that, you really have to learn it. Yeah, and there's a lot to, to it, it, definitely. I mean, you have to, not only do you have to understand Amazon very well, because there's yeah. all the different fees and the, that whole ecosystem, but then you also have to be pretty good at kind of managing your stock purchases and your stock turn. Right. And, uh, so, no, it's definitely, not a, um, it's definitely not an easy business to run. But certainly, you know, we've seen businesses uh, through A2X doing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of orders a month. Awesome. And so How long have you guys been around? We've been since 2015. Awesome. And so... Um, you know, if, if you do it right, you can build these amazing businesses with Amazon. It is right. a powerful platform. I mean, that's, yeah, you yeah. definitely can have great successes. It just, yeah. I know there's some videos out there that make it seem like, oh, it's so yeah. easy. Like I just went and bought kind of clearance like, yeah. items and yeah. we're good to go. <laughs> it's like, no, it doesn't it's happen that way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, those fees, man, when mm -hmm. I saw them hitting uh, the, the one client, I'm like, man, I'm like, why are you, you're losing money on Amazon. And mm -hmm. he was actually using it more as like a marketing tool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like he's selling other places, but... Using they can it. also buy it on Amazon if they want right. to. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but no, that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons that's so important is because you get that net payment from Amazon and you think, great, I made some money. But yeah. So you've got to take your product costs out of that for those sales that you made during that period. And if you're not matching that properly, it's easy to lose track of, yeah. of it. So yeah. is there anything else that I need to know about it? Um, so every now and then, uh, Amazon throws up some curveball, some new type of transaction <laughs> of or something. They want to um, charge you something else for something? Exactly. Or a really common example is actually Amazon has this um, lending program. And so if your client um, takes out a loan, then suddenly you get all these new types of transactions showing up from the settlement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, um, this is our mapping page, where basically you define what you want to do with all of the transactions. And so um, in a typical scenario, so if a business hasn't taken out a loan, like this one, it would have no lending. Okay. When lending comes in, you'll get an option to pick how you want to account for nice. it. Nice. Um, and likewise with other things, um, Amazon recently had like a lightning f lightning deals program and you could pay that at a lightning deal, but then you okay. had a fee, of course, for a lightning deal. And so that showed up here. Well, that's um, good that you're, yeah, you're able to split all that out then. Yeah, and you can also, so this sort of defines the high level um, mappings. Yeah. But if you, you know, I mentioned at the start, some accountants will want to kind of fine tune it. Yeah. So if you wanted to, for example, really tweak the settings you can use the little orange plus symbol to kind of get um, oops, uh, next one down that one so you can basically get in and um, so this is obviously quite a simple account but in a more advanced account maybe doing Canada and USA or those kind yeah. of things you'd have lots of different types of transactions and you could define them split them all out yeah so this is sort of the kind of the I guess the hub for an accountant who wants to really take control right. of it. And then once you have ha have it set up how you want, you can actually just copy the mappings from one account to the next. Oh, yeah, you really do. So okay. when you have a client that you've got... When you said that, I assume want. someone just had one screen open and the other screen open, they were just no, making no, the same thing. No, you yeah, really can. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that basically means you get a standard process for your Amazon clients. And nice. And you just copy it out to each one as you, as you bring on new ones. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's... Um, what that's kind of support do people have, like, starting out and... Um, so we have um, we have kind of an onboarding flow that okay. guides people through getting set up. So I've kind of skipped that part, but basically... But no, that's fine. To get started, you have to connect to Amazon and, and to QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, but both in both cases, it's just sort of a one-click connection, so it's not um, particularly difficult. Um, and so we have uh, we have live chat support um, yep. down here um, and email support. And awesome. then if we need to... I take it like kind of as a more detailed support issue we would book a, um, like a screen sharing session and a call so that's sort of our, our main um, main oh Alex Barnett joined 
Really? Yeah, he just joined. I like that first person that joins. <laughs> 14 minutes in. Hey, Alex. We're looking at uh, A2X Amazon um, accounting stuff. It's awesome. Are you walking around here somewhere? I still haven't met you in person. I guess I'm going to have to, right? Um, but, or maybe I have. I don't know. Anyways, so, but this is a pretty freaking cool app. And you guys are in the Small Biz app showdown. Correct. Right? Yep. So, come so see your us. time, uh, like the top 10 finalists? Top 10 finalists. And to it's tonight. Tonight at 6.15. 6.15 when we're announcing who it is. Uh, we do the pitches tonight. Oh, and tomorrow? Is tomorrow. Yes. Nice. Yep. So come along. How long is your pitch? pitch? Uh, three minutes. All three minutes. And it's, how much are you freaking out? Um, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit? <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people, and three minutes is actually quite hard to... Oh, you're going to rock yeah, it. Yeah. So we'll see. But uh, we're very excited. I think it's... I think you're yeah, solving yeah. a really good problem that's out there, because it is... I mean, while we love Amazon resellers and everything, it, and Amazon, it's complicated yeah. in there. It's complicated, so. and it's a huge... Like, from, from an accountant point of view... There's something like 3 million Amazon sellers. Wow. So as far as a vertical to get involved in e-commerce right. and Amazon specifically is actually really I wonder how many market. accountants out there actually yeah, niche with Amazon resellers. Mm. I know one actually lives about a couple blocks away from me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I was in a leadership um, class with her. Anna McCullough, I think, or uh, Anna... I don't know. I, I'll... Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, so she actually has a private Facebook group for Amazon resellers yeah, and, yeah. and her. Like, no other accountants are allowed or anything like that. Right, and she so. helps her with the oh, yeah. questions. Yeah. She has, like, some, yeah, little guides and little stuff. Yeah. yeah. She's awesome. So, I'll but I wonder who else is yeah. out there. Yeah, no, I think it's a, um, I think it's a huge opportunity for yeah. accountants. I mean, um, there's just this massive market. And the complexities of inventory, um, taxes, yeah. cash flow. The taxes part? You know, like, it's really, an accountant can really help these businesses. Right. You know, they need help. Well, and so. there's apps that help with the tax side, too, yeah. that make it easier. But, but knowing how to make them all work together, <laughs> yes. like setting them up for your clients. Exactly. Like yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's A2X. Awesome. We, uh, we, well, uh, thank you for your time. Awesome. Let's no hope this video all worked out well. Hopefully. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to close it and shut it off now. Thanks, guys.